They say change is the only constant in life and no condition is permanent. But what happens if your life has been characterized by a lot of pain and suffering as a result of your upbringing or your background? I know they say it's all in the mind, but rather than speak from a position of relative inexperience, you know, I, I sought out a, a number of really inspiring, motivational, and transformational people to really get their take on change and transformation. Okay. Babette, yes. I am so inspired by you. Thank you, my dear. Uh, because I just think you represent the future. Yes. And I think, you know, um, you know people in Africa, people, African people all over the world, people of African origin, Yes, we know we have genetic this. And, right. You know, we're athletic and we, you know, we've got pretty good genes and whatever. But we're not taking full advantage of it and we're not really taking full advantage of our potential. When I see somebody like you looking as good as you do at your age, I'm like, that's how we should all be. Tell me a little bit about your, your story, your okay. journey, and how you, you, you came to this point. All right. And, you know, you know I, I, just, I just want to learn from you. First of all, I, I, I want to share with you that it's not always been this way. My, my journey started off with uh, lots of illnesses, uh, eczema, asthma. I had um, so many issues with my ears. I had really bad uh, infections all the time. I did drugs okay. for a while. Okay. Uh, not a long while, but long enough to know that I'm, I was creating a lot of damage to my temple. Um, I met my husband, Ron Davis, in 1990, and when I met him, my entire world changed. He shared the vegan lifestyle. He was not vegan at the time, but he knew he had a lot of information shared one book with me, I read that book, and it was like overnight I decided, I'm done. Um, and it was all for personal reasons at first, you know? It was just, it was for selfish reasons, I, 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 I like to say. Um, but after I got into it and I started studying and realizing that I am just a part of the whole, and that every sentient being, every earthling has a right to be on this planet Absolutely. and live a life that's free of torture and, and some of the despicable things that humans do to animals nowadays. So then ethics were involved, okay? But my entire life, I ate the standard American diet dyes, sugar. My mother put sugar in everything. I once asked her, why do you put sugar in everything? She says, well, as a child on the farm, when we picked vegetables, they were always sweet. And they don't taste like that anymore. So I'm putting sugar, I'm putting sugar in your vegetables so you can have a little bit of that sweetness. But what happened was my skin was ruined. Um, it, it was really, it was, I was addicted to the stuff. I still, right today, I'm still having challenges not sweetening my desserts too much. I'm using different sweeteners nowadays, but the fact still remains that once you're addicted to that, and they put it in everything on purpose, because they need to addict you. But once you're addicted to that, it's very difficult for you to let it go. But the beauty about this journey is that I'm able now, at, it, it's, it's been what, 25 years, 25 years that I've been on this journey. I'm, I'm looking at myself now and the things that I can do at right. 65 years old. I just posted a workout video today of myself doing some really crazy stuff and people are like, is this lady really 65 years old? But yes, it, it, this lifestyle, this wonderful, amazing lifestyle, has given me an opportunity. I can see you. Oh, look at these. Oh, look at these. Such an, oh, have such an incredible. I know it's a, such an incredible, an incredible um, quality oh, of life. You go, you go. I take no medication. I'm still running hills. I, I'm, I, it's just I don't even know what what all to say. I'm just begging people to just try it. Just. 
you know, it's 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 weird to try to um, what do you, what do you say? You 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 want to stay alive, but you feed yourself death to stay alive. It just it just doesn't compute. You know what I'm Almost saying? Almost a contradiction. It's a it's a contradiction. So really, what do you really want out of this life? Because to me, if your quality is not good, life ain't good. Life ain't good. Life ain't good. You're running hills at 65. You understand what I'm saying? Looking good running Thank them you. hills. Because when I wasn't feeling good, I would I was the that was the candidate for flu once a year. I get influenza. I don't get a cold now. You understand? For years I haven't had a cold. And I look at my staff, some of them like, it couldn't work. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what that is anymore, really. <laughs> but I'm just so grateful and my life is so amazing right now. And just sitting here with you, having having this talk with you so I can share with people, y'all. <laughs> it works. Trust me. All you all you gotta do is eat life. Just eat life and don't sit down and try to eat everything that ain't nailed down because you don't need all that food. Too much food. It's too much food. Too much food. Too much on the plate. It's too, too much. much on the plate. Yeah. We don't need all that. Okay. okay. Should they be eating, you know, I mean, after a certain time? Should they well, be I eating? Don't, I don't. You I definitely don't. don't. I'm not, oh, come on. I'm, up, I'm at the gym at four o'clock in the morning. In the morning. Yes. Or either I'm prepping. Okay. I'm, I'm in my kitchen right. early in the early. morning. So I go to bed early. I get my rest. I'm not a party animal. Okay. I'm not an alcohol. I don't drink. Mm -hmm. I let the drugs go a long time ago. <laughs> And, and so I keep myself, I keep the temple really clean. Oh, the I want to be here for a while. Yeah, and I we want you to I want to share this story. Oh. Now, go ahead. Um, two questions. The first question, for people who want to go vegan, for a lot of them it's like, oh my God, I have to stop. Is, should they transition into it? Should it be something gradual? I mean, because I, I mean, I, I don't, I know there's a lot of people out there who are either going vegetarian and from vegetarian going vegan. Right. Is there a transition that they should go you know, through? Should I, it be a, a sort of abrupt look, I, stop? I, I have to be perfectly honest with you. I did that. I, I first stopped fishing. I, 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 I stopped meat. beef and pork. And then I was eating fish and chicken. And then I kind of moved into vegetarianism and then just Stop the dairy. went all the way. Yeah, all the way. Went all the way. Because the dairy was really, really bad for my lungs. I have, I, I'm asthmatic. Okay. So once I cut out all the dairy, I never had the problem with the asthma. That's true. I cut the dairy out, asthma was gone. Hey, that's important because that's it's big. That's big. There's a lot of asthma people out there yes. who are really suffering and thinking that, oh my God, my world is And my about skin. It. I had the worst skin. I couldn't even wear anything backless. I had, my skin was ripped. My face a mess. I had ex eczema everywhere. Gone. Look at me. I don't have any of that. This is all because this, you cut out dairy. It's my lifestyle. Now, talk to me about the workouts. What, what role does the workouts play? I mean, I lift a lot, I work out. But I, I mean, look, look at these arms. I know. 65, 65, look at these arms. Look at, look at bicep, look at that. I mean, <laughs> that's not messing. Look, I, this is my area, and I'm right now, I'm just like, oh my God. I'm now, like, know, oh, OMG right you now. You know, talk to me about humans that. have to move. Right. When we sit, up, let me tell you, I've taken six months off a workout before, and I feel worse than when I do the hardest workout ever. I can't do it. I won't do it. I get my butt up and I go and I work out. I do something. My preference are outdoor workouts, running hills and, and or either doing the Santa Monica stairs or something like that. I love being out of doors. But it's chilly now. I got a gym membership and somebody just came in today and told me, girl, you are a senior citizen. You should not be paying for your gym membership. <laughs> Security. <laughs> Good. <laughs> to see if I can get a free gym membership. Nice. I mean, hey, they're perks with being 65. <laughs> but yeah, uh, workout is is mandatory. It's key. You know, it's it's, it's key. Part I, it's, of the part, it's part of the lifestyle. Right. And that is all that I share. And when I'm on Facebook or anything like that, I'm not necessarily telling people what to eat and how you should eat it and all that. I'm sharing my lifestyle. Because guess what? This works. 
I don't know what else to say. It works. I got young men flirt with me. What can I say? No. <laughs> Yeah, one, one, one young no. man right here is, you know, <laughs> open to see if he can get with you. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just amazing. And I know sisters, I know, I, 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 I have girlfriends and, and, you know, we don't, we don't want to put on the little smocks and the little funny black lace up shoes because, you know, we're walking around with so much weight on us that we can't, we can't wear a pair of high heels anymore. You know, we don't want to. We don't want to do that. When it comes to the human body, it was designed and created for you to move. Humans are strong. You made a point in the beginning that, especially us, the way that that we built and what we can endure as a people. When you sit back and just lay down and do nothing, death is right around the corner. Death is around the corner. It's right around. The corner. And that's when you just age it's overnight. When you just age overnight. Because at that point, you've given up. I ain't given up. I'm not ready. You know, I can still wear this cat suit that I bought for my birthday party. And I'm going to wear it. So, it may be racy, but I'm 65 and I can wear it and I'm going to wear it. So, ladies, don't hate. Anyway. <laughs> I just think it is, it is my life, it's my human experience, and I'm going to live it the way that I see fit. As long as I'm loving and I'm not hurting and I'm doing a good thing, then I'm going to enjoy my life. Well, you, you're a role model, you. not just women, but men as well. And like I said, I think you represent the future because I think at 65, we're supposed to look like this. This is how women look. It is supposed. We're supposed to look like this. It ain't nothing special. Right. We're supposed to do this, and that's why I say, come on, y'all, get on board. Uh -huh. This works. You know, and I grew up in poverty. My mom and dad abandoned me when I was a kid. I grew up going to bed hungry at night. I was labeled as being slow, uh, you can even call it retarded. I was labeled and all these things. So, you know, can you imagine a kid, you know, growing up and believing that about himself or herself? Waking up feeling afraid of feeling that I'm gonna embarrass myself if I raise my hand in class. If I, if I ask a question, people are gonna know that I'm stupid. I live my whole life based around that. But when I thought about it, what kept me from being successful is my own, my own fear was holding me back. Fear, my fear was holding me back from reaching my full potential. And I work with millions of people, helping them to understand that fear itself is an illusion. It's self-created. So me growing up as a black boy in Memphis, Tennessee, told that he can never be anything, told that he was dumb, couldn't learn anything, Matter of fact, I took a class at school. The teacher told me, he said, son, oh, you might want to get a job working with your hands. You're not smart enough to do anything else. She didn't say those words, but that's what I heard. So the reason I do what I do, because I believe that you can do anything you put your mind to. I believe that there's a power inside of you that is so great, so grand, so glorious, that you will never, ever really realize that. So I'm saying to you right here, right now, you gotta first know that it exists, and you gotta reach for it. If I can make it, I don't care what you've been through, you can make it. When I was seven, I was molested as a kid. That's pretty deep. For a man being violated like that. So tell me your story, and I can tell you it's only a story. It's only a story. And if you be, are really, really, really ready to change, nothing can stop you. They say that every passing minute is another chance to turn it all around. Let's think about that for a moment. If we really believe with all our hearts, our minds, and our souls that we can really change for the better and commit everything in the passing moments, then change and transformation eventually will come. Let each and every one of us commit to positive change, no matter how small it is, and commit to that change at every passing moment. And then our nation and our continent will surely change for the better. Sometimes change requires forgiveness. Forgiveness of our past, forgiveness of our parents, forgiveness of our spouses and our companions. 
And in so doing, we forgive ourselves. And we're able to let go and move forward. Let's be the change we want to see in Africa. It's time to forgive.